that better? Yeah. Who are you? You CIA? Good morning, Sergeant Blackburn. When are you going to tell me what's going on? 18 hours ago, I get a call from Homeland Security saying there's a Marine in detention I need to talk to. Some story about a terror plot in New York, and the Marine claims he has information to stop it. Now, the best part is, he says it's going to happen today. So here we are. You look jet-lagged. And by that, I mean you look like shit. Who is this? That's him. That's Solomon. And you still believe he's planning an attack here in New York? Don't you? Why? Because he said so. I read the file. He's trying to save his own ass. He doesn't know what we want to know. Wait, just hear me out. You want to bury me after? Go ahead. We don't need to bury you. You're already dead. He doesn't know what we want to know. We're on the clock. I'm pursuing this lead. What you're going to do is help us clarify the attack scenario. Your cooperation might even get you free of the world of crap you currently inhabit. All you have to do, Sergeant Blackburn, is fill in the blanks. Are we clear? When did you first hear about Solomon and the PLR? It was nine months ago. Operation Swordbreaker, Iraqi Kurdistan. Okay. I'm listening. All right, you claim you were knocked out after the earthquake. Yes, sir. Don't bother calling me sir, it's not gonna matter. Because you're gonna torture me anyway? You don't work that way anymore. Now you just go to the darkest corner of the room. Great. How long were you unconscious? Sun had set when I came to. There was a broadcast. Were you out for six hours? Eight? It's important. Is that a train? Try to point? focus on the question, please. Yeah, I was still shaky as hell when I pulled myself out, so I don't know. It was dark. Pulled yourself out. You were buried? I did see something. You just said it was dark and you were groggy. Are you trying to get a rise out of me? We're just along for the ride, Sergeant Blackburn. You're driving. For now. If you say so. So it was dark and you were groggy. You saw something after the quake. What was it? Stop me if this is incorrect. Farouk al-Bajir and the PLR seized power in Iran almost the same day as the earthquake. They become a threat. A few weeks later, we send in 50,000 Marines to take them out. We go to war in Iran. Is this a history lesson? What part did you play in going after al-Bashir? That's a broad question. Well, then I will narrow it down. Your first mission. Initially, our role was to do BDA after airstrikes in the northern quarter of Tehran. Battle damage assessment. Why were you doing that? It was procedure. We were looking for a high-value target fast air was supposed to hit. So far as I can tell, you don't have a great history of following procedure. Tell me about your interaction with Lieutenant Colby Hawkins. She was an F-18 pilot? She? Don't know her. As you went in, she took part in an airstrike on al-Bashir. That's a nice story. I don't see how it connects. What, do I gotta draw you a map? Al Bashir was never there. That's why you went in. Now, we knew he was in Tehran somewhere. He'd gone into hiding. I see. And until this point, you didn't believe Al Bashir was affiliated with Solomon. There was no link. Just what I saw in Iraqi Kurdistan when I saw. I've Solomon. got a question. Al Bashir was our JFK. We should have left him where he was. You remember saying that? No. Who did? I don't know. Sure you don't. I bet you don't know who shot your CEO either. Fuck you. Let's not forget the nature of a little interaction here. This is not a trial. You are guilty. I know how your fucking story is. We're not here to manhandle him. Let him go. Now, as far as our treatment of him goes, our directives are very clear. I just want to get to the bottom of this, and I want to do it cleanly. Fine. Tell us how you found the nuke in Tehran. How many portable nuclear devices did you see in the bank vault? One. You saw one? Just one. But space is for three. Just because I see a couple of lights at night doesn't mean I saw a goddamn UFO. Look, we believe there were three. I believe Elvis is still alive too, but I'm not buying any tickets for fucking shows. How about the other nukes? Well, one's already here. So you don't know about Paris? What? You heard me. He didn't stop the... Who didn't stop what? You mean him? 
He used to be Russian Spetsnaz, Vimple unit. Dmitry Dima Mayakovsky. The kind of operator who doesn't show up someplace by accident. We know you know him. We've met. If you want to make a point, make it. We think you know why he was in Paris. Tell me what happened in Paris, then I'll tell you. We don't know any more than you do. The only person who knows what happened in Paris is Dima. When was this? Ten hours ago, 80,000 dead. Ground zero was the Euronext exchange. How's it feel? You think I wanted this? You OGA guys are even more fucked up than I'd heard you were. I'm trying to stop this from happening in New York. Who do you think did it, Sergeant? The PLR and Solomon. Well, the blast yield matches Russian suitcase nuke specs. We put Dima in country at the same time. Do you know how that looks? Dima was trying to stop it. The Paris nuke must have been one of the missing ones. Bullshit. Then what? Didn't you still let it happen? Sergeant, go back in time to the bank. You said the Paris nuke links to the bank. Can't be, Dima. Can't be. I am waiting. I sent out a distress call. Anvil 3, part of Charlie Company First Tax. They came to get us. Miller came to get us. You were trapped at the bank. Yeah, and running out of time. Like we are now. So they came into the city. Where was that? There was a plaza outside. We were with the nuke inside the bank, waiting for Miller and Anvil 3 to get there. I radio them. I need to know when the relief force is coming. They say three minutes. We'll be there in three minutes. This is the price you pay. Pretty picture, isn't it? It's nasty, but it doesn't connect Solomon to the nuke. What else do you have, Sergeant? What else do I have? What else do I need? You just saw him murder Miller. Look in the mirror, Sergeant. You and your buddy Dima's fingerprints are all over this story. Are you fucking cop? I mean, whose side are you on? Look, you're in the same room where this video was taken. You're at the bank where they found the nuke, isn't that right? Yes, that's right. We found the three nuke racks. The torn up map Solomon was on the security monitor with Al Bashir. The building's gone, your evidence is gone, you got nothing. Yes. All right, when was this? You're sure? Okay, thanks. Well, it appears one of Solomon's aliases just hit the grid here in New York. There you go. So I guess your story checks out. Al Bashir was real clear about Solomon being his right-hand man. Was he? When? When we went after him. Campo and me. Does this look familiar? Because it should. Perhaps you'd like me to tell you what's on it. What's it going to cost me? Time's running out. Oh, I'll give it to you for free. That phone contains information about a Russian arms dealer named Amir Kafarov. He was on pretty good terms with your old buddy, Al Bashir. Did you know Eating that... a dead horse. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was done speaking. Did you know that Kafarov and Al-Bashir were working together? All I know is we were redeployed based on the info we got from this phone. And where was that? Northern Iran. Kafarov was believed to be there with the missing nukes. Believed to be? No one but you heard Al-Bashir's confession. No one knows where he got this phone. Listen to me. We have to stop Solomon. You took the phone call. You know he's here. That's all well and good, Sergeant, but we still need you to fill in the blanks. This next part is where you have a big credibility problem. Fine. Kafarov had a villa in the Gilad Valley. We were headed there, but it got complicated. So you lost most of your unit in the valley against the Russians. Who survived? Montez and myself, Cole, some others. Did Captain Cole get your guys killed? What? No. Isn't that how you felt about it? Deep down. You know, in Bosnia, I lost four of my closest friends. Rocket attack. The guy that was on OP was sleeping. I was fucked up for six months. 
Thought about killing him. We all talked about it. I still think about how he failed us. I'd feel sorry for you, but I feel more sorry for your buddies. Because they never knew who you really were. They would have understood. Would you? Would you understand turning on your buddy? For the enemy? The Russians weren't our enemies. They killed your fucking friends! Hold on, hold on. Now, at the same time you were in the field in Iran, we intercepted burst transmissions between Dima and his handlers in Kiev. He was in Iran as well. Why was Dima in Iran with the Russians? So you drive there, you and whoever's left, you Cole Montez. Now, if I'm in your shoes, I'd be thinking about my friends. I'd be wondering what I could have done differently. I might even be wishing it had happened to me and not them. So you get to Kafarov's villa, ahead of the main forces of Russians, ahead of everybody. Not everybody. Dima was there, wasn't he? And you made a decision. You made a fucking momentous decision about your life and your allegiance, about how much you're willing to do for your country. You don't know anything about the decisions I had to make. Tell us what it was then. Convince me. We split up to search the villa. I was alone. So you admit to shooting your commanding officer under the direction of a Russian agent, is that correct? So unless you have something else significant to share with us, Sergeant, this investigation is over. You have been played. It's the Russians. Oh, it's Solomon. Haven't you listened to anything I've been saying? You want us to believe that there's a PLR threat and Solomon's at the head? Yes. To believe that you acted in the best interests of our nation when you let a Russian agent go and shot your own man. But we can't. Nothing can be corroborated. This is insane. No one can verify the third nuke even exists. The bank collapsed. al is dead. Your unit is dead. Dima's presumed dead. Kafrov's dead. 80,000 French people are actually dead. Those are all your witnesses, Sergeant. The only thing we can say happened for sure is you fragged your CO. Bring him in. You saw this man shoot his commanding officer, right? Just knock off the bullshit, Sergeant. Didn't Dima set you up? Didn't he talk you into shooting Cole and then escape to Paris where he triggered the nuke? Wasn't that Dima? Solomon has the nuke. Solomon is one of ours. He is an overseas asset, and he has been for years. We put him next to Al-Bashir for information. You are shitting me. He's a murderer. You saw the video. Well, you get the good with the bad when it comes to assets, and sometimes sacrifices must be made for the greater good. Isn't that your angle? Jesus Christ. The nuke is still out there. Solomon's still out there. You can't just walk away from the threat. You might be right, Sergeant. Maybe Solomon was too close to the fire, but I assure you we are on top of this situation. The Russians are a clear and present threat. Yes. What do you mean you lost a train? Solomon's using the PLR. He is an overseas asset and he has been for years. He used it and he uses everyone. He said, get the bombs. 80,000 dead. We can avert war between our nations. Well, the blast shield matches Russian suitcase nuke specs. We've secured what appears to be a WMD. Wait, there's room for two more. How many portable nuclear devices did you see in the bank vault? Where the hell are the other two? The 14th of this month. We got maps of Paris, New York. He's using public transit to move the weapons. Suleiman will strike. The train map inside the bank vault. Uh -huh. What was the time written on it? Um, 6.02. Why? Dave, you trust me? All right, follow my lead. Radiation is like life, a uniquely damaging event. 
Perhaps I will live another 30 years. Perhaps I will die tomorrow. I am telling my story here. The story of how Solomon used power-hungry men like Al-Bashir and Kafarov to set fire to the world. And the American Marine, who, like me, chose the hardest path of all. But I have no regrets. I have always served Russia trying to make a difference. Sometimes I was forced to make difficult choices. Many lives have been saved. Many have been lost. I am certain Moscow does not view it in the same light as I do. But enough is enough. As Vladimir would say, you can only die once. Make sure it is worth it. <laughs>